Does he even have me presented? <laughs> ah, there you go. You, you That's the cutest go. fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Mule. <laughs>and they were like okay we already redacted as much information as possible but (laughs) good luck with everything else (laughs) 
it's not going to go anywhere. So <clears throat> it, it's kind of interesting. You bring up the the topic of guns. Did you see that uh, that video that I think Jeffy sent to us earlier? With those two doofuses uh, making a remote control boat to enter it into a battleship, remote control battleship thing. Oh, <laughs> did it have a remote control gun on it? Yeah. So oh, the, part of the thing is you get you get BB guns, little pneumatic BB guns that apparently come to find out the people that are actually doing this actually build like these little pneumatic BB guns, and they're really the one guys that they described is really cool. It's a good idea. Basically, what these these doofuses did, they're just they're basically like, you know, D level trollers. I mean, they it wasn't even a very good video. They're just doofuses, but they made a ship out of a battleship game box, mm -hmm. sprayed it down with a sealer guy, and then that stuck, stuck a. <laughs> they went and bought a BB gun, like a like an airsoft style, you know, Glock looking thing, <clears throat> but they bought a display model. Yeah. And it wasn't it, it, the tip wasn't orange, like it wasn't yeah. painted orange, which I thought yeah. was law. Now, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know what the law on that is anymore. If it varies from state to state, but yeah, maybe, um, you know, yeah. And, and these two, these two idiots were, you know, oh, it's a god, you know. I mean, they're being ridiculous with it in general, <clears throat> and they were talking about, you know, painting it orange. They mm -hmm. have an orange tip on it or whatever, but um, then they did. Then they didn't do it very well. They did it at the very end or whatever, but it was it was just odd. It was unusual. I was surprised to see that. I mean, when I was a kid, yeah. I mean, you definitely. I've still got a a BB gun slash pellet gun that I had when I was I don't know ten. That's I mean, it's like a direct clone of an M sixteen. Like it, it yeah. looks exactly like an M sixteen. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure that the uh, airsoft guns have to be painted orange or have to have the orange tips. Hmm. I so. I have one or two airsoft guns that I I bought, I bought the last one that I bought I bought it years ago and the reason I bought it was because we were having problems with squirrels uh, <clears> at the place that I was at I didn't want to kill them so I just bought an airsoft gun to just kind of chase them away right squirrels and pigeons too we had we had both at my uh, townhouse back then yeah. Um, so you know, just just something to to make a move along kind of thing, and uh, <laughs> and I am pretty certain it was. I, I could go get it, but it was a okay. Beretta style. It was a Beretta style thing, and I'm almost certain it had an orange. You 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 are probably right. Uh, and so here's the law as it sits. Uh, federal law in the United States indicates that all toy guns transported or imported into the country must have a six millimeter wide blaze orange tip or blaze orange stripe thick on both sides of the barrel. However, this is not required by federal law for airsoft or paintball. Airsoft or paint, Well, paintball makes sense because yeah. most paintball guns are not actual right. gun looking things, right? Yep. yep. There are a few that bear a certain resemblance, but yeah. It's interesting that airsoft doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mean, and you know what? It, you know the funny thing is, is that a lot of the airsoft, um, let's, let's just say, a lot of the airsoft uh, community holsters, hold, oh. no holsters and clips, belt clips, and uh, you know all these other things are interchangeable between mm -hmm. the real weapon that it is. Yeah, they're one to one for sure. Some of them are yeah. really accurate. Yeah, like I'm, I'm sure you, uh, your, the gun that you were talking about, did it look like, uh, uh, did it look like this guy right here? Because as soon as you said, uh, oh, well, uh, maybe I don't have it. Oh, yeah, okay. So I did save it to my desktop. Um, dang. Uh, here it is. Uh, did, 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 is it showing? Oh, there it is. Like that? Um, oh, mine, the style. Yeah, mine does look a lot like that comma, but mine is real silvery and like mm -hmm. obviously plastic. Yeah. It's not black, yeah. although they do obviously have them like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I never got into the airsoft thing, uh, but I've seen some full auto airsoft. Wasn't wasn't Nick just playing that this last weekend? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I never did either. I, I was I was big in the paintball back in the day. Yeah, so was I. Yeah. But the the I'm, I think it I think you have to have a good group of people. And we got the we got so it was it was like that for paintball too. We didn't actually enjoy going and just playing pickup ball because you got people that are tryhards and you got people that are wipers and you got people that are just gonna play like shit. And it just doesn't end up being very much fun if yep. you're not gonna play like that. But from what I've heard airsoft is a lot like that too because you you have to trust the other people because there's yeah. no visible indicator right, right that you Mark. get shot yep <clears throat> yeah there's a there's a guy that on um, that i've seen on youtube that has a he mounts like a gopro on the front of his little sniper rifle is that and, uh, is he and, dutch or something or yeah and yeah and he, yeah. he, gets, he puts a little yeah. on the screen every time they get hit yeah that's really cool that's really cool um because you know, uh, as we all know, with a, a, a round ball flying through the air, yeah. uh, they ain't going to fly straight, no. you know, most of the time. So uh, I remember back in the day, these guys trying to do these long range, low pressure, yeah. you know, guns with for paintball yeah. and it not working worth a shit. Yeah. The ball be like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So they, they um, the tech down really well though in, in air they because they've got well, they a, the, a the balls are a little bit more consistently round as opposed to a paintball which always has a seam. Yes, um, but they they've got ones even that little Beretta that I've got is a I think they call it a hop up or something and it and it, mm -hmm. it basically puts a top spin on it. Yeah, well, so, or, and, or a back spin on it, right? So it goes farther straight. And the and the um the airsoft uh, little BBs or whatever you want to call them are rough, yeah, like a golf ball. Yeah. So they're not smooth, you know. The paintballs are straight up smooth, you know. Um, but yeah, no, that's pretty cool. I've seen that video is pretty neat, you know. If you get a chance, look it up on YouTube. I forget what the dude's name is, but I don't uh, but yeah, I mean, on on that, it's you know, the the one thing that I will not uh, <laughs> advise people to play is uh, using sim munitions. So we got invited to <laughs> we got invited to be the bad guys at a local police department's training. Yeah. No. <clears throat> Those fuckers hurt. Yeah. Because they're paint, but they come in a little fucking plastic. It looks like the damn front of a shot shell of a shotgun. Just yeah. tiny. <laughs> fuckers hurt, man. So you get bunkered uh, with a paintball. It's oh you know, yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. it'll leave a bloody ring if you get yeah. bunkered really one see these the, these I mean load load into into uh, a magazine just like right. You know, a nine millimeter bullet, and it's just the front end of it is plastic, and it's got paint in it. And when it hits you, it hits hard, and you get a little tiny bit of paint. <laughs> you can direct your attention so, here. Maybe you can let me zoom in a little bit. There's like a little dent here under my eye from an airsoft pistol from an airsoft pellet. Oh no, shit! Yeah, I was, so. in, um, I was in seventh grade when it happened. Someone was trying to be cute and shoot me. Mm -hmm. At a party, and instead of hitting me here, it hit me here. Mm. I broke their gun on the spot, and uh, violence ensued. <laughs> <laughs> and mind you, I had a very hard time seeing out of this eye because I just got like, if that if that say if that was like a metal BB, yeah, this hit right on my yeah. eye socket, right here, right on the bone. I shit that ocular orbital, whatever it is, bone around yeah, there. Around. Like my, my, okay, so so it hit me, and like when I was looking, everything was like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One's after one eye. <laughs> Damn. That guy in my middle school had copper BBs embedded into his head. <laughs> oh shit. You, know, you, went, you went to middle school with Mr. Larson? <laughs> <laughs> the baby comes out next week. <laughs> yeah. Shit, I remember Mattel used to have a uh, a straight up Thompson, little Thompson machine gun. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like three three dollar Thompson machine gun and even had a smoke that came out the front after you shot. What happened to folded <clears throat> paper and rubber bands, right? Dude, Rob, you probably paper. be labeled a terrorist at this point at, at school with the with the rubber band and folded paper. That's or, a weapon. Or, or you flick a paper a paper football at him. Right. No, so the paper, rubber paper band football, if you do it right, if you hit him on a line. Dude, the rubber band and the paper, you take that paper and you mash it down with your teeth. Mm-hmm. That sucker will do some damage. Like pack packing a snowball really good. Yep. <laughs> yep. You see that video of the, of the snowball packing uh, handheld yeah. thing? Mm -hmm. It does like 
50 snowballs at once. Yeah. Pretty awesome. You're the probably you gotta do that shit bare hand, okay? Yeah. That's just that's just how it has to do. You do. You, you gotta get a patent good, yeah, like really good, right? You, you, gotta, gotta, get, you gotta learn how to throw with cold hands. Yep. No hands. I'll catch up. Because I've never I've never had an I've never had an easy time with all the different kinds of gloves I've worn over the years packing a snowball with gloves. It just ain't never works right. Because you gotta get the little bit of melt too. Yeah. Yeah. You need that heat. You gotta have that heat. Um, oh, the slingshot channel, the crazy ball guy. Yeah, that guy's that guy. I haven't watched that guy in forever. He was that hilarious. Nuts. Yeah, that guy's nuts. I don't even remember where he's from. He's he's from somewhere in Europe, but I don't remember where. I want to say Sweden or something. He had a, an unusual accent, as I remember. But he's hilarious. Whatever it is, he's just he just seems like he just enjoys that That's, whole thing just purely. Just, are we, we're not talking about the same guy who does the rubber band uh, wood, uh, the wood slingshots, are we? Well, I think he's changed subjects, but uh, yeah, that's a different different guy for sure. Than, than there's like, there's like there's like a uh, like a Scottish guy or something that does the the uh, deadly yeah <laughs> wood wood uh, you know like he had a trebuchet he had a freaking a bow and all these things and and it's yeah, all rubber Corey, band. Rubber band. Corey Sprang is that his name? I couldn't remember. Or a church just said that uh, that, that guy's he's a trip. He's, he's like short and thick, right? It's like a yeah. stout dude. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. <clears throat> That's him. Yeah. Oh, Tim um, got a different spelling. That looks more Swedish. <laughs> Whatever it is, wherever he's from, he is a trip. He is a trip for sure. Uh, so let's rewind back a little bit. Uh, Massey already uh, mentioned old uh, Scott Godley stepping down from the uh, stepping down from the FDA. Um, mm -hmm. So, Massey, I think you you want to you want to go ahead and kick your your opinion off that you expressed earlier this week when that happened. Um. So, the um. Well, oh, fuck you, Washington Post. Um, so the um, the news breaks that you know Scott Black got the ebb, you know who blah 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 about teen vaping, um, uh, you know basically stepped down. Um, I don't even think they have. Uh, I don't think they've even said why he's stepping down. Right? I don't think so. Yeah. No, so, um, so then, you know, they're saying white matters. He said, you know, his, uh, he said he regards the wild certain teen vaping as an epidemic, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, apparently Democrats have been saying he hasn't moved quickly or aggressively enough. Um, so all of a sudden over what angsty is talking about all of a sudden over social media, everyone we're talking about Instagram, Facebook, fucking at, at vape shops, Yay, you know, rejoicing over Scott Gottlieb's, you know, uh, uh, stepping down and all this. And I just, honestly, I just got tired of fucking seeing the stupid bullshit. Like, look, we get it. This guy's stepping down. But to me, he's such a small, you yeah, know, cog in this, in, this, in this fucking FDA uh, uh, wheel that I'm afraid that the next person that comes in is someone who they're going to put in there who's going to get the things done that this guy only talked about mm. you know and and it, it's so typical of the vaping community to just fucking they're like that dog and in, in, in up you know squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> yeah, just eating they, they are, they are. they're they're picking the, and it's the same people and it's constant and i know a lot of them are our friends and we love you all but it's the same thing every fucking time they focus on one thing. Oh, there's this regulation. There's this one thing. And there's nothing wrong with that because you need people's attention to these things. But, you know, I mean, there is, uh, who, you know, great. This guy stepped down. Yeah. You know, well, let's worry about who we're going to put in there. Let's start, start finding out, you know, what the process is, who they're thinking about putting in there, what you can do about, you know, raising awareness about, hey, look what this guy could have done, you know. Uh, in, instead of just celebrating that he's gone, yeah, um, I, I don't disagree. By the way, I think I think you're right on about it. the The only thing that I would say is he's been talking out of both sides of his mouth for a while, right? What yeah, he has yeah. directed 
He has said not, and these are not the sound bites you ever hear, right? But he has said that vaping is a viable harm reduction strategy, right? And and then on the, mm-hmm. on the next the next sentence, he'll turn around and say, "Yeah, but if we have to to limit adults vaping, regardless of whether or not it's getting them off of cigarettes, in order to combat the epidemic that uh, of the teen vaping stuff, then that's what he's planning on doing, right? Which is yeah." preposterous and anti-science and bullshit and all that other stuff right my my only the only thing i think it is good news is somebody that's been doing that right talking out of both sides thing there's a possibility of somebody getting in there that actually will listen to the science that most of the rest of the world is listening to yeah i mean just you know take even the uk those guys are explicitly allowing it in a lot of places and not demonizing it that's you know maybe maybe we'll get somebody good and you're right though it, it's certainly a double-edged sword, right? We could get somebody worse, right? We could get yeah. somebody that's not even bothering talking about arm reduction. I look at the FDA, right? Like, I look at it like the NFL and its commissioner. Um, the commissioner of the NFL is usually indicative of owner's interests. I see that the same being the same, like Roger Goodell, pro whatever, uh, owner's commissioner, right? Not yeah. like a pro player commissioner, not like it is in the NBA. I think the FDA op- basically operates like that too. I feel like this guy, whoever's next, is going to be indicative of those interests, which would be of you know, farm, pharma, food, whatever. So, yeah, because uh, at the end of the day, it's them who you know we've always talked about these lobbies that run the FDA. The guy who's going to the next guy who's going to be in charge is going to be the same. He may not be as much of a dickhole. He might be a more likable dickhole, but <laughs> right, you know. <clears throat> I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a, like a new. I, I myself don't see a new commissioner like you know doing something sweeping like that. Right. Yeah. On. Yeah. So, and and my other thought was, regardless of what you think about uh, our, our current president and all of his uh, foibles, <laughs> mm-hmm. put it that way. One of the things that he that he does say that he wants to do is is De- deregulate, and deregulate yeah. stuff, and mm, you know. Yeah. Maybe if he gets his hands in there and he can appoint somebody that's not a not a doofus, maybe. Yeah, and I and know. I think I think um, you know I don't know I, I think that uh, I, I I hope that the person next person that they put in there takes the time to to see all that, um, but we also don't want someone in there who won't like you said won't listen to the science won't listen to any of that. And it's just gonna pay, you know, pay, you know, party favorite. Because here's what'll happen. Yeah. If 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 someone who is, you know, heavily more Republican, you know, sided gets in there, okay, in a few years, that person's gonna get, you know, booted out, yeah. and then, you know, a, a person with completely different views. Yeah. I mean, absolutely, completely different views is gonna come in there, and and uh, you know, so again. We might be buying out of time by getting somebody else new in there, and uh, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm hoping that it's a it's a it's a good result of the person going in there. But yeah, I just I always you know it's always the uh, in, in vaping you you've had the the great and then the doom and gloom and then the the you know you go through this it's like a roller coaster you know yeah. and and I get it there's not much in the community be talking about and this is could be classified as a big win but this isn't a win yeah because he stepped down on his own he wasn't kicked out no one changed his mind you know nothing anyone did in the vaping community made this guy step down that's why i'm asking let's see why the reason was but yeah. it's, it's less of a win and more of a question mark right exactly <clears throat> and i agree with you by the way you were asking about why he was stepping down uh, a couple of guys in here said that uh that he stepped down to spend more time with his family. And Festy mentioned that that's usually code for Chase fleeing an indictment. <laughs> Which or, is he touched, or he touched somebody in the no no spot. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> or he black faced, or who the fuck knows what. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Something surfaced from 40 years ago that he's embarrassed about. Yeah. You know, let, let, me, let me stop. Yeah, there was a uh, video of him from a club comp. I just want to talk about that because that's the biggest, like, holy shit. I mean, something you did like 40, 30, 40 years ago and a yeah. picture comes yeah. up. What? 
I mean, I, I I dressed as a woman for Halloween one time. I hope the pictures come out. You know, that made yeah. a pretty damn hot looking woman. But we we all did some pretty stupid stuff, like in high school, in college, even. Yeah, we did some dumb stuff, and that was before the internet. <laughs> I, right. I, I, and, and I said some stupid and dumb stuff before, you know, yeah. and with with friends. So, um, you know, and done. I mean, I think everybody has, you know, it's just and then, you know, these guys that are then they're coming out and saying, yeah, I did this and here's a picture, but I'm not stepping down. Dude, you're an idiot. <laughs> you know, you, you're you're done now. You know, you're looking like Aunt Jemima's freaking for Halloween. What are you doing? <laughs> so. Yeah, it'd be different than doing some of the stuff last week, right? <clears throat> Not yeah. even on Jemima. He was dressed up as someone that was relatively current to something that had happened in Florida at the time. I can't remember what happened. It was a well, it was the it was the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he was dressed as a hurricane. Yeah, he did that like a month after th this. Yeah, this was, uh, this, this was after Hurricane Katrina. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just dying for the one of the black guys to come out and say he was Clayton Bigsby. And and he dressed up like KKK, right. you know, while he was in while he was in uh, in high school, and now it's white face. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, just some of that shit just right, you know. Me crazy. So, good morning, Tomas. Tomas. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, Lead Pipe said that uh, it'd be nice if the new director after he rolls out on the stage and introduces himself and whips out a mech and blows a huge cloud. I, I said I'd like him less than Gottlieb. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would like that so much. I just wanted to come out and say, hey, let's let's try to actually chase down some like, I tried on one of these electronic cigarette thingies. They're pretty neat. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe do that instead of smoking. I don't, want, I don't want a guy that's a vapor. I just want a guy who's about whatever he's about, but also likes to see cool shit. Yeah, I, I've, you know? I've met too many vapors to want him to be a vapor. <laughs> so, so I was getting ready to close the window about the uh, the laws on the toy gun, <laughs> and I scroll down, <laughs> and one is federal law with the orange tip, and then it's then there's the specific New York City law. The whole toy gun has to be orange. <laughs> <laughs> Just carry around a fucking safety cone, All right? Yeah. I, I'm surprised they even let him in the New York City. I know, I know. And the whole thing outright. The the Nerf guns look like just you know. Well, shit. Did you did you hear about that guy coming back down to Florida that tried to put his rocket propelled propelled grenade launcher in carry on? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did yeah. I use it to yep. watch potato. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that is I believe he was flying out of. Uh, here we go. Florida man. Florida man tried Florida to man. on a commercial flight. Uh, Lee Valley International Airport official said Tuesday that a Florida man had a non-functioning military rocket propelled grenade launcher and replica grenade um, in his carry-on. <laughs> 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 I can't make this shit up, man. That's uh, so good. <laughs> so, <laughs> He said, "When the bag was open, <laughs> when the bag was opened by TSA, um, uh, officials were surprised to see the unassembled parts, and this is what they found. <laughs> <laughs> Those look like the ones that uh, we gave the guys in '79." Holy shit. The man who lives in St. Augustine was located at his departure gate and detained by police for questioning. The man will not face charges, and authorities said they will not release his name. Uh, upon closer inspection, it was determined that the various components of the device could be assembled, but fortunately, the device was not a functioning launcher, and the grenade itself was a realistic replica. The man told police that he believed the item could be brought on a flight and checked bag, but authorities said no. Realistic <laughs> replica weapons are permitted on planes. <laughs> uh, why they didn't release his name because it's not, you know, Muhammad Al. Something. Yeah. That's not yeah. The why they're not releasing his name? His name is is uh, Don Smith. Um, oh, I'm sorry, officer. I didn't know I can't do that. I didn't know I can't do I that. Did, I'm, my yeah. They say <laughs> anyone who brings anyone who brings replica weapons uh, can post civil penalties up to thirteen grand. And then in quotes, don't bring military or replica weapons 
at all, said TSA. Ship them. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I heard about it. They were like, you know, the news over here is all like trying to play up, you know, six o'clock news. They're like, you won't believe what a man tried to bring on a plane. News at 11. And they started, they started they started seeing this shit at like four o'clock, okay, mm -hmm. four thirty, whenever the news start. And I look at my wife, I'm like, do I wait or do I just fucking Google it real quick? And then like they came back on. They were like, later tonight, this man brings something on the plane. And I'm like, fuck this. So I just popped it up. I'm like, ah, oh, he tried to bring an RPG on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, worked, that strategy worked great in the late eighties, right? But <laughs> yeah, not yeah. Work these days. Not anymore. I mean, in, in, in late 80s, even still, if you're in a small town, and that's where it happened, you right. call the police chief. Hey, Bobby, what happened? <laughs> they dumb some bitch trying to bring fucking RPG on a plane. <laughs> uh, uh, talk about our last snack of our and stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I think Fu was right, though. That's definitely a Chappelle's get ready mm -hmm. to happen. I'm sorry, officer. Oh, yeah, not. <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> RG, 10 things TSA agents hate yeah yeah that, this is the perfect yeah tips do do these tips to stay on the TSA's radar is there a way I can get this <sighs> so there was a um, while you're figuring that out NXT, there was uh, an article um, on uh I think the the name of it was the Thailand portal, um, and it said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have Sorry, to ask John. Har I'm gonna have to ask John Harrington about this. Where the Thai portal <laughs> is? Uh, he was just there not long ago. So, anyways, uh, e-cigarette user e-cigarette users urge quick solution after tourist bribery accusation. A network of e-cigarette users has called on the authorities to quickly come up with appropriate solutions for, to regulate e-cigarettes in order to protect the country's image among foreign tourists. Apparently, what happened was uh, was that uh, a French online media outlet reported that Thai authorities had demanded forty thousand BT bot. from a yeah. bot, from a bot. French. From a French woman to free her after she was arrested for possessing an e-cigarette. I didn't know they were legal. A uh, 31-year-old woman was on vacation in Phuket in January, and she was allowed to return home last month, but then shared her experience with the media. Uh, and basically, these people are saying, you know, the news hurts our country, and it's a tourist destination, and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and um, so... Uh, in 2014, Thailand banned the import and sale and servicing of e-cigarettes with violations facing punishment based on notifications from the Commerce Ministry as well as orders uh, from the Protection Board. So apparently the lady got jailed and they wanted her to pay to get out. So mm. <clears throat> that is uh, that is crazy, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. you probably should know the laws before you go. To somewhere like that, that that literally has outlawed the whole thing. Uh, but this is an excellent segue to what I was trying to share a minute ago, Massey. Well done. Get it. Uh, so I caught this on Kassaz, uh, uh feed the other day. Um, good old Alex Clark uh, posted this thing. He was just going to say uh, he was thinking thinking uh, Kristen Noel Marsh <coughs> for posting heads up alerts on a daily basis. Their digestive you know uh, advocacy news stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, but even cooler than that is he was saying last night uh, he he saw one of these posts and he was made aware of an, an ordinance in Pittsburgh that made that banned vaping and smokeless tobacco in public parks fine, but the ordinance would prohibit possession by anybody, including adults, and violators can face a fine of two hundred fifty dollars. So he was able to fire off a quick email to the council, get uh, some time in front of them, and uh, and he said he was not alone in opposition to, to the possession and excessive uh, fine language stuff. Um, and then it looks like it looks like uh, they're going to have a public hearing. Um, but I, I just thought it was cool. I wanted to bring up not only this ludicrous you know proposal, this bill that was coming through, but also just saying thank you to this person whom I do not know. Uh, but that's pretty cool. If, if Alex is even using 
uh, your your stuff. That's uh, that's pretty awesome because he keeps a pretty good tab on that. But he can't be everywhere at all times. So, uh, you know, filling him in with info, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I think it's cool. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know you guys didn't mention it earlier, so I don't know if you had uh, this to cover, but a uh, huge, huge update. Um, so I was going to talk about this. I had it in my news. I, for, I basically just pulled them up. Um, a couple days ago, Mooch uh, made a post about uh, fake Samsung 30T batteries. Mm, okay? Yeah. So I was going to talk about that, but what I'm going to talk about now is the actual update that just happened a few Ooh. about... 10, 12 hours ago, Ooh. and uh, here's this image, okay? And he says, stop the presses. There might be actual genuine Samsung 30Ts without the four radial score lines spaced 90 degrees apart in the venting disc under the top contact, okay? Mm. As you can see in this image here, let me zoom in. Du, du, du. We'll zoom in because this is the important part right there. He said, do not dispose of any 30 T's you have without those score lines until I know more and post about it. They might be genuine. All of the genuine 30 T's I've seen so far have those lines and all of the fakes I have seen do not. But I am receiving reports of 30 T's without those four score lines that were purchased directly from reliable vendors. Hmm. I have ordered a pair of 30 T's from each of these vendors or they are sending me a pair. I hope to get them all over the next week or the next few days and we'll retest them right now. I do not know if they are genuine 30 T's without those four score lines or not. So hold on to them. Don't throw them away. Let them do this testing. So if you have some of these batteries, we'll zoom back out and show you what they look like. Okay. There is a picture of the one on the top. They're like uh, tannish greenish colors. INR 21 700s. Um, you know, and these are the score marks that he was talking about. Please do not throw them away. Just hang on to them and let him do his testing and get the other ones in because there is a possibility that they are legit batteries. So, oh, Mooch, doing God's work. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's bound to happen. Um, uh, you know, somebody in the, in the, uh, in this post said, you know, I also believe that there are two types of genuine 30 T's rolling around says, I own four pairs. Two pairs are vape cell rewraps that you confirmed are as 30 T's about a year ago. Those were bought from a site and then performed perfectly fine. And then the other two he bought from um, a Netherlands site that do have the radio lines and perform exactly the same. Um, so, um, you know, we'll see. People should not be, you know, um, upset or confused over you know, any other stuff that Mooch is posting, he's really good. And that's why we want to get the word out to hold on to those batteries, wait for him to post. Um, He'll be testing them here pretty soon. Which is also why you should be a part of his Patreon if you're not. Yep. Uh, Because this is the kind of shit that he does and make sure that everybody stays safe, which I appreciate. I've been been a loyal Patreon supporter since the beginning. He's the only one I've ever supported on Patreon. (laughs) Yeah. It's worth it. <clears throat> you a few chunk of chains uh, a month will feed a starving mooch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll, it'll pay for a new uh, brim curver. Yeah, and he's he's been doing he's been doing um, uh, he's been doing pretty good with like I know he posted uh, bench test results a few days ago, mm-hmm. and he's been doing really good about you know. Uh, Pot, you know, he'll put like there was one that said, um, uh, which one was it? He had put one up that said, um, uh, it had uh, bench test results for the Lishan LR217700. Um, you know, he said best ultra capacity, but possible issues. Um, and then there was another one that he was he was testing and said, you know, might be a a uh, a 13. 0.5 amp, amp re, re, uh, rewrap, not sure yet. So, you know, these tests that are going through, you know, as he's doing them, and I think that's part of the problem too, right? People want that instant gratification. They want Mooch to just turn the camera on, do the test. They have the data, and that's not how it works. <laughs> 
So um, it takes them a little bit to do these tests. So um, be patient. Yes, you do. Um, boop, boop, boop. I put a link to his uh, his Patreon in the chat. Excellent. Um, I have a piece of vaping news. Oh. I have vape mail coming in Wait. on Saturday. Hey. Before before you do that, mm. since you're in Texas, did you see the story about the school district in Texas banning long sleeves in an effort to combat vaping? I did not. <laughs> I did not. Yes, yes. What? I will. I will put the link in chat so you guys can paste it. I don't have the chat open, but a school district in the Texas Panhandle is char is changing the dress code to combat their campus vaping problem. Long sleeves are no longer allowed in schools in Channing, Texas, aka Anxie's hometown, because no sleeves. Teachers say <laughs> students have been. <laughs> I'm ready for an Anxie joke. <laughs> Teach. Teachers say students have been hiding their devices and secretly exhaling smoke into their sleeves. Students now have to roll up their sleeves at least two or three inches above the wrist. Can't make this shit up, folks. Uh, there it is in chat. So. That's <clears throat> not only is that funny. I mean, it's obviously funny. Look at this shit. Look where this is. Where uh, this? <clears throat> so I just had to Google because I didn't know where Channing, Texas, was. You see this up here? That's not the Panhandle. <clears throat> You're right. It's not the panhandle, but that's 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 the little dot that Google drew. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that that shit that's up like near Amarillo or whatever. That's it's cold there. Yeah. Like that's not that's not like ha ha cold. That's starting to get up there where it's actually in the winter, pretty damn cold. I'm yeah. down. Can you see my cursor? I can't. I can never remember yes. when my cursor comes or not. Yes, we can see your cursor. Okay. Yep. So so Dallas, you know, DFW area is like right here, and it can get. Yeah, like this last week, it was in the twenties. Um, yeah. So it gets pretty chilly up here. It, it, it gets pretty damn cold. That's crazy. That's mm -hmm. that's really funny, and it's and it's hilariously stupid. And you know, I mean, it's a school district. It's it, they're always yep. always with the funny rules, but <clears throat> that's pretty nuts. That is pretty bananas. <clears throat> some people in the some people in the in the comments were saying that nah, it doesn't sound like they actually banned sleeves since they're just having people roll them up, and I'm like, mm. so some people are saying, yeah, they just push them up. I guess that's yeah. one thing, but it's still, I mean, obviously yeah. ridiculous, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it, it's since you know the sensationalization of it, you know, oh my god, mm -hmm. you know, it's like kids are putting their vape in their shoes. We must ban shoes. Think of the joke. <laughs> yeah. So. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that is funny. Uh, Sorry, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just. I, no, I no, that was hilarious. I'm glad you did. <clears throat> um, but I do have a piece of vape coming in. I am excited about it. It's something that Sean uh, mentioned last week. He and I both have one of these coming in. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. It is the, the NAR EA, which I am ooh, really excited ooh. about. I, I really hope. <clears throat> that it turns out as cool as I, I hope it is. And When's he gonna make the nareg? Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. It would be pretty getting funny. Closer. Getting the, closer. The Nariega. Right? Yeah, I said that last week. I'm like, he's got the, the next one. I imagine it'd be the Wilfredo. Let me show you the, <laughs> of the deck. I'll show you a picture of the deck. Oh, let me see your deck. Nariega. Oh. Oh. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Look at all that machining. It is so much machining. He was telling Sean and I a little back. <clears throat> we were talking to him a couple, you know, this was three or four weeks ago. We were talking to him about this. That, I don't remember exactly if it's just the positive post or if it was the negative post that he has to mill in there. But one of those things, it takes like half an hour to do that little part. Just just for one Addy and one little part. Like, it's it's not the most efficient <laughs> tool pads apparently. Oh uh, boy! <clears throat> so that's that is why it does cost a little bit more money this time around because it takes so long for each one to be made. Um, <clears throat> he was telling uh, uh, the group, the 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 people that made on this first list. He was telling us the other day that he had a, a selection of screws uh, that he was that he used for test fits. Mm -hmm. and ap apparently, the uh, the negative one, the, the one the one that's milled into the deck, is so tight. 
Um, he, he, he made it such a, such a tight uh, tolerance. He needed another 0.01 millimeters. And wow. the, the selection of screws that he has, and his screws are always, you know, slightly out of spec, right? It's just because they're cheap parts. <clears throat> so that's why he had several. And he, he was finding that of the several, there were others that were in the bat, you know, the full batch of screws that he had that just weren't going in. Um, so he needed to, he should have uh, ex extended it out a little bit more just to make them a little bit more smooth. Yeah. Crazy, 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 crazy. So yes, I am excited about it. Uh, I am. Uh, it's, it's one of those things I've told you, I've told you cons of just about every other NAR Addy that comes out because I'm not blind, but I do have high hopes for this one. I really hope it's as good as I, as I think it might be, but I'll let you know. I'll let you know as soon as I get it. I'll have it, I think, on f Saturday. I think it's going to be here on Saturday. So I'll have oh, some time to build the vape on it before we uh, meet next week. Ew. Hey, Angsty, what are you vaping on? Ooh. It's <laughs> a good question. I had to ask before it turned 10 o'clock. Yeah, right? before we shut down. Uh, uh, unsurprisingly, I've got a limelight uh, freehand ram board. Uh, this is the glue, of course, because it's Ram. black. And uh, and on top, I've got a Haku Venna bell cap from Chris Munn on top, as well as an Omen tip. Inside is Rail Crack by Derailment Labs. No, Derailment Vape by Co. That's what it is. By the way, I have an interesting thing to talk about about this, but let's finish this thing first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a note about this. I forgot. Foo? Um, sorry. Clicked away. Um, I have my limo. Mm. Okay. tip, and I have some unreleased fruit shit in here. It tastes like strawberries and stuff. Ooh. What do I think? I think it needs mint. <laughs> <laughs> Everything needs some mint. Yeah, dude. Because like the only other straight up flavor that I've that I've vaped that's a, that's a fruit. It's it's either guava or limeade in a bedding. So. Yeah. Other fruits, they got mint in them. So I let it um I let it sit with a paper towel touching the cotton and it's alive. Mm, touch that cotton. Mm. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know why it fucking flooded so bad. And then the device was like, eh, it's shorted. So it's working now. Mm, that's good. I got this one in there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I figured, you know, Mardi Gras. Right? Mm. This is um, this is Carnival Celebration. Mm. Ooh. Uh, Ernest in the chat is uh, getting an REA as well. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. I hope you uh, also enjoy it and get to build it soon. And a, 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 a. <laughs> R E A. <clears throat> so, something that I didn't think about until just a moment ago when I was showing off uh, the, my my rail cracker with my uh, modmaker.co.uk refilla on top. Um, I have been using this guy, uh, the the refilla cap, for quite some time. Right, refilla from Manila. <laughs> uh, it's been months. I, I don't remember exactly how long I've had this thing or however, however long he's put it out. But it's worked great, uh, and I think I've only used it on the uh, derailment bottles because, I, yeah, obviously, I go through this a crap load. Most of my uh, um, R stuff, I just typically use in tanks, so I don't put a refill cap on there. But um, I had a viewer uh, who's – I don't know if he wants me to say his name. Uh, we'll call you Michael. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see your last name. So Michael pinged me uh, the other day saying that he couldn't get his refillus uh, uh, on straight on a stash bottle. And I was like, okay, well, it, you know, here's a couple of little troubleshooting things or whatever. And he said, okay, uh, one thing that I said was the case, and now it fits better, but it's still not right, and it's leaking around the outside. I'm like, that's weird. So we got to talk back and forth, and then I ended up taking a picture because I wondered if they were just different. So the bottles that... Uh, Stash is using and sending our stuff out in, the threads are different. <clears throat> the threads are different than the ones that Bombies has been using. Now, they're both Chubby Gorilla bottles, 
Mm -hmm. And they're both branded on the bottom. And and we know Josh, he would absolutely not be buying knockoff bottles, right? So we know they're coming from Chubby Gorilla, I'm sure. But uh, he was saying that they don't fit. So I took a uh, I took the lid off of one of my stash bottles. Actually, I think I took a picture with the Lushington. And then put it right next to um, the other. I was going to say, weren't we just talking the other week about how the black bottles are easier to break the cap on? Yeah. Yeah, these are both the smoke bottles. Can you check this shit out? So look at these threads. The threads are visually, and obviously I've zoomed in a little bit here, but the threads are visually different. Like you can tell even by eye. I can zoom in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, not only are they shorter, they're also they're shorter this way, and they they appear to be the same like threads per inch, right? The, the TBI looks like it's about the same. Did not someone talk to Zen? <laughs> yeah, this someone, one looks like a Z three threaded or something. Someone got fucking a badass fucking belt. I tell you that much it's right a, now. Zen's threading's just like a what a twenty by one, right? It, yeah, no, I thought his was different. Half. Twenty by one, I thought was the standard for most of the mech mods that were out back in the day. So you could switch out switches and and uh, hybrid caps and all that shit. But no, this is this seems to be different. So I, I felt a little bit badly because obviously I talk about the refill all the time and we obviously talk about Stash all the time. Both They're, they're both good companies that, that we like. And I, I had no idea that they didn't seem to be compatible. Now, I reached out to, or I told him to talk to Rick. And, uh, and I have not heard back yet, but I will revisit this next week um, and see what we see to see if this is just a new, uh, like Stash's bottles are just brand new and they've changed up the threading or what. But um, but the, the refill of bottle definitely, apparently doesn't fit. And it makes sense why it doesn't fit because they're, the threads are different. So I don't know, kind of wacky. Something I figured I'd bring up um, in case you were thinking about getting uh, some Stash bottles and putting a refill cap on. Uh, don't for now. <laughs> but don't put the refill cap on it yet until we figure out why the bottle is slightly different. Uh, because it may it may leak on you. It may leak on you. Damn it. <laughs> Just knocked over my freaking mod twice. Oh, boy. Mm, I have one more thing to talk about. But somebody else have anything they want to mention before? I don't want to just keep talking. I uh, I'll just go ahead and say that I built, I built a PC last weekend. Ah, uh, yeah, you did. Built a PC for the first time since two thousand and one. Did you take a picture when you were done? What's did that? you use tape and stones? I used no tape and stones. <laughs> I did so operating back then. <laughs> I, I was joking with my dad. I was telling my dad about it uh, the day after I built it. And, uh, and he was saying, hey, you know, how'd it go? And I was like, well, it went pretty well. I said the, the biggest thing that was different was I, back in the day, the last PC that I built, I, you know, I put the, installed the, installed the CPU on the motherboard and then put my heat sink on it, which is like a, you know, a three by three by two, you know, roughly a cube of a heat sink. I said the one that I had to put on the other day was the size of a small cantaloupe with a fan strap to it. <laughs> yep. Which, it's true. I think it was enormous. It was the, by far the biggest pain in the ass of the bill. And the yep. funny thing is, it's more so how they designed it because um, for anyone wondering, he is a he put a 212 Evo on yours, right? Yeah, I can pull up a picture. Yeah, so it's you know it's a it's a biggish cooler, right? It's tall. Yeah, um, the mounting bracket's a pain in the dick. I, I put it on this bill at first. I switched to like a closed loop water cooler. Yeah, but it's twenty five dollars, and you can't touch that cooler without before with, without spending fifty to sixty bucks because Noctua makes one that's exactly you know similar spec but much easier to mount. But you're also going to pay fifty sixty bucks for it. Right. So yeah, that's the one. Great cooler. It's just you know the mounting bracket's a, a bit of a dick. <laughs> So when I pulled the mounting bracket, speaking of which, when I pulled the mounting bracket out, I was in the I was in the hangout with some of the other ECR guys, right? And uh, and I think it was uh, C Death that was in there, and because he had, he had apparently installed several of these, so he was familiar with it. So I was sitting there talking to him. <laughs> he was telling me to pull up the little X bracket, which you know it can pivot in the middle and move to different positions depending on what uh, motherboard and CPU you have. And I said it looked like a gynecological tool because it was. 
It's like this little ratcheting, like spreading Four thing. Yeah. That's exactly what I called him when I first got him. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. Might as well be, uh, yeah, have some duck bills on it or something. I don't know. It was really weird, but that was by far the, the most pain in the ass. And it wasn't that bad. It, it, I think the guys had talked it up so much. I was actually a little concerned about it. So I went really slowly with it, but it wasn't that, mm-hmm. it wasn't that bad. Just going to put the back plate on, get the screws in, the little riser screws, and smear the mayonnaise on it. You know. True. Mayo always makes it. So you built a com- you built a computer. I built yeah. a little mini computer. You built a mini computer. Oh, yes. A little arcade desktop arcade. Pretty nice little build. All the way around. It uses a Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, and it works too. So that uh, uh, that boot up video that you were talking about that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it took me a little bit to get it to get it going, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Now my kid, when she hears the clicking of the of the uh, joystick, she's like, "Thumbs running! I want to play! Yeah, it's time to play!" <laughs> Just throwing the damn joystick down. So, Addy, welcome, my friend. <clears throat> oh, um, Rob. Yes. So the uh, Rob's asking, "Did I smear or did I glob?" Uh, I went with a pea-sized ball of or you know dot. That's what I did, and then the smush. That's what that's what I used to do, and that, yeah. I think that's still appropriate. People like to, yeah. It's you're not supposed to do it like it's a fucking toaster strudel. Right. I, mean, right. I mean, toaster strudels are great, but you're not supposed to paint your your chip like that. Right. You um, put the you put the pea sized glob or the rice the rice yeah, sized little stripe, and then you get the smoosh. Actually, Florida so man. Need to redo Florida it. man breaks in. Florida man breaks into jail to smoke a blunt with his friend. <laughs> No, honestly, Pomi status is at a hundred, but that's it. <laughs> I went. I went and saw um, Gabriel Iglesias. Uh, oh, yeah, who was that? I forgot to ask you about that. I saw the... Dude, it was great. It was really good. Um, I'm, I'm. I. I think there is a place for people who can do comedy, and it be fucking hilarious and not use any cuss words. Yeah. And not be like disgusting, dirty. Like I yeah, think that those types of comedians, way. those types of comedians, like have it so much harder. Yeah. Because I could not be up there expressing <clears throat> myself without saying shit, fuck, motherfucker. Fuck God, it, dude. So yeah. fuck I mean, it, <laughs> like seriously. So so no, it was it was really good. The comedians that he had come out in the beginning were really good too. Uh, that that opened for him. And uh, I mean, he was great. He was hilarious, and he he does his homework. That man does his homework about coming to fucking little Podunk, Melbourne, Florida. Is that right? Like, yeah, right. Well, he yeah. actually I came mean, to your town, town. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he wow. was he was here. He was at the uh, in one of the um, uh, one of the big auditoriums. So, yeah, yeah, he did. And, and then it was cool because uh, that night they had the Falcon uh, rocket launch. So he went out. After the show to go watch the uh, night night launch, so it was really cool. But uh, yeah, no, it was it was good. So um, to your point, you talk about clean uh, clean comedians. It is difficult. I completely agree. You used to call that uh, you know Cosby esque. I don't think yeah. you really say that anymore, which kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's kind of kind of creepy. But uh, but he, he he said that uh, you know he he's he, they're he's from from California and and uh, just segueing into the Florida man thing, he said you know. Uh, he goes. I, I, he he basically said how he's Netflix's bitch now because he's got a, a Netflix uh, show coming out and all this other stuff. And he said when when he went on Netflix, um, uh, you know, it opened his it opened his uh, brand of humor to every war, every, every part of the world. Like yeah. he did one in in some fucking bumfuck town where no one spoke English in, in like uh, uh, old Soviet Russia. And uh, I mean, it was just, it was just amazing. And uh, so he, but he said that the only, you know, the, the one of the only other places that he's ever gotten so, you know, messed up or has fond memories of is in Florida. And, and it was, it was in Orlando when he did a show, but it was just, you know, he's like, man, Florida is. You guys joke about Florida, man, but you guys got some crazy shit that goes on down here. So well, he goes, you, you got a guy breaking into prison. <laughs> this fucking week. 
I yeah. love it. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good. And, and like I said, it, it, uh, um, he, he did, you know, have a, uh, cuss word here and there. And it was, he went, he went over almost 45 minutes of his allotted time. Damn. Yeah. He's got, so he's got this, this, uh, <laughs> he's got this clock on the front and he goes, you guys, I'm going to tell you the story. So he tells you the story, right? And then he, he tells you why uh, he, he's warning you. And it's because he's got this clock that starts green and then it goes yellow and then it goes red yeah. and then it goes flashing red. Right. And he's, when it starts flashing red, that's when it starts costing money, <laughs> you know, because the venues have a set yeah. Yeah. lot of time. And if you go over, you know, it's, it's game over. So, um, so yeah, so he, he went over for 45 minutes. It was really good. It was a really good show. So, uh, but again, cool. I, mean, I, I, I've seen his comedy before, but I always thought, well, it's because it's on TV or it's because, mm-hmm. you know, I never saw any of his Netflix specials. So I thought, I thought, I mean, I was just amazed at, and, and all, the, all the other comics, you know, were, were the same. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty amazing to be able to make people laugh like that and not say a single cuss word. So, yeah. Well, I, I watched one of his Netflix specials. I think it was a fluffy one, I think. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was interesting because I've I'd, I'd never seen him live. Um, I have seen a mm-hmm. bunch of comedians live, but I've never seen him live. But in watching that, if I remember right, there was some, a good amount of like behind the scenes stuff in, mm-hmm. in the special. And it was cool to see how those guys just kind of all, they're like, they're like a troop, so to speak, right? They're kind of like a, mm-hmm. a whole family, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Like even like his, his, like his, obviously his openers and stuff follow him around, but he's got like, you know, all of his boys that also yep. take part in the show. They're not just like his security guys or whatever. They're all like, yep. you know, like his managers and whatever. They're all yep. like involved, which is cool. I think that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> all right. Uh, that's all I got for the unit, actually. Boom. Yep. Boom. Time flies. Time does fly. It's pretty I mean, difficult. I, didn't, I wasn't really doing anything different. Yeah, I, like the, the show didn't feel any different. You know, I had I had the basketball on next to Chap. I mean, the game was over at nine thirty. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. God Godspeed, Alex Trebek. Oh, I know, man. I just got that right before the. Oh yeah, stage stage no. four pancreatic cancer. Mm-hmm. And he fucking, he fucking he fucking took it like an Alex Trebek. He comes out. On 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 video and says, I wanted you to hear it from the source. I didn't want you to hear no shit about it. I just got diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. He goes, and my contract says that I still need to host this show for another three years. I'm gonna fight it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the yeah. way to do it, right there. Man, so I, grew anyone... up, I grew up watching him, and well, I grew up watching a lot of shit, but uh, yeah. Alex Trebek and. Pat Sajak were some of my if anyone, television television if, anyone, coming out. if anyone can beat it, it's it's definitely fucking Alex Trebek. So, um, but no, you you bringing that up, I, I was reminded how shitty my Monday was because yeah. Uh, yeah. I walk into work, and one Jay Bigglesworth sent me an article about the frontman from Prodigy passing. Yep, right. Very sad because they I grew up listening to them, and then Luke Perry died that afternoon. Who? Whether it was my choice or not, we watched a lot of 90210 in my house growing up. Mm-hmm. We watched a lot of television together on the weekends. So, yeah, was it. There you go. Addy Monday said, sucked. Addy said, I'll take classy for $2,000. I got it over <laughs> hours early. That was the only good thing about my Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's tough. It's not what took Steve Jobs, I think, was pancreatic cancer, too. So Steve Jobs, we were actually just talking about this in the Discord. Steve Jobs got a rare form of pa- pancreatic cancer that you can detect before it gets stage four. Because that's mm-hmm. what sucks about pancreatic cancer. It's hard to catch early. It's, I think, one of the hardest ones to deal with. Uh, he had a treatable, very treatable form. And well, this, that and he tried he to be all... To go, he decided to go holistic. Yeah, exactly. He tried to go a naturalistic Buddhist thingy on it, so it didn't go well. And uh, yeah, it's like I didn't know the guy, but it pisses me off, like knowing other like family friends and such that mishandled their cancer, and he's like the most high profile case of it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it sucks. <clears throat> go to a fucking oncologist. Yeah, I I knew of not personally, but I knew of a guy in my church that had cancer, and he was. Uh, 
uh, he probably approached it how I would, which is you go to a damn oncologist and you find out the most successful or highest odds of success thing that you can possibly do, do it and also do whatever else. If there's some herb that somebody says to rub on your, you know, your butt and, and it supposedly works, put some oil on your toes, do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, do all of it, right? Don't, don't just, don't, don't pick the, don't pick the one that's just holistic and just hope that's you do mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> but that said, I haven't had to deal with cancer. So I don't, I don't know. I do know I've watched a close fan, family friend, though have to deal with it and it's sometimes the drugs are as bad as the disease man like some of those drugs are pretty rough on you i've had to deal with it not myself but yeah it it sucks yeah um yeah Damn so it. i mean it, so i kind of joked about it a minute ago by saying do everything but i do understand those that don't want to do that because it it's depending on how healthy you are right i mean if you're already kind of old and, and kind of a in a weakened state some of those drugs are yeah. rough Taking that yep. stone, but doesn't help. Just putting that out there. You gotta yeah, take that shit serious. Like for sure. A lot of times, chemo is the best course. Like, yeah, you gotta like radiate yourself, but if you want to stay alive, that's what you gotta do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, early on in the show, Duro said that we're supposed to have a good show. I hope it was a good show, Duro. Yeah, we did. I mean, we can do. what better way to end the show with R. Kelly getting arrested? For owing more than one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars in back child support, <laughs> my man goes and does an interview. My man does and goes an interview and freaks out on whoever it was ABC, and then he gets arrested. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. Ain't nothing wrong with the golden showers from above. I'll pee on you. I'm gonna piss on you. Yeah, the fucking girl fell asleep. I'm like, yo, motherfucker was quiet as fuck this show. I was like, there, there, there were things that were said. Oh, I looked at chat. Like, Dur I think Duro missed out on the entire gun conversation. Oh, so, so my my brother my brother posted this thing about uh, uh, Elon Musk, and he's like, man, this guy's a freaking genius, you know. And um, uh, it was the it was the uh, ABC or CBS or whatever interview with him, uh, and where he says, you know, you know, hey, our patents are wide open. You know, uh, our competitors should and could use our patents. And, you know, they ask him, well, aren't you afraid of, of you losing, you know, uh, your hold on the market? He goes, that's not what Tesla was here to, to do. Tesla was here to push other manufacturers to, you know, create their own electric vehicles. That's why we open our patents, our technology, everything like that. And he goes, and if it gets to a point where they're beating us uh, at it, then, you know, then we'll just we'll go out of business. He goes, but. You know, I don't, you know, I don't see that happening. And yeah. uh, so right, right in that thread, you know, there's a bunch of people, you know, because th the man has definitely pushed technology and engineering and all that uh, with everything that he's been doing a, yeah. a lot further along. Right. <laughs> so I posted in that thread the, the gif of the guy sleeping in his fucking Tesla going down the highway. <laughs> it's like they see me rolling. <laughs> I was like, that was great. Now you can sleep in the car. Mm -hmm. Even though, uh, even though Chuff was saying that uh, apparently next year, uh, by 2020, they're offering the option where the car will be fully autonomous. So you can buy you could buy the the autopilot for five thousand dollars, and for an extra two thousand dollars, you can get uh, or three thousand dollars, you can get the fully autonomous upgrade whenever they release it next year. Mm. So. Knowing those guys will be pushed down from the cloud all wirelessly and automatically, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not even there's no no um no hardware difference. So I don't even use cruise control in my car. I don't know how I feel about something driving me. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. You know, I don't even I don't even use you know, I, I keep my right calf worked out, man. It's, I keep that shit pushed down. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't sleep in a car driving itself, man. I already have a hard enough time driving when certain uh people drive i'm trying to take a nap you know when you're riding down to a convention with uh with a lab rat and uh and a, and a busta mm. <laughs> yeah no I, and, and it's possible because i because i don't have one and i don't not, i don't even have a car that'll park itself and that's becoming relatively commonplace these days Ch but, chuff's chuff's loner did that yeah. in the car you were there for that yeah 
I, I saw some saw him talking about it anyway. And I, I don't know. To me, it's just weird, but maybe that's just because I'm not used to it because I don't have one and I haven't tried it. But well, it is creepy. I agree. L- let me put it to you this way. In the city, it's going to piss people off, the self-parking cars. Because, you know, you see a spot and you need to parallel into it. You, know, you better... You better be precise with your shit because you know you're gonna you essentially cause traffic up the block, right? If you, right. Like, right. But yeah. like, it's a self-parking car. It like takes time. It's like... Well, and, and, the, and the, problem problem is, the, problem is, the problem isn't the car. It's you know the people waiting for, you know, not being used to having the electric vehicle around them. Right. You know. Right. Uh, like like this guy. Um, uh, he was he went and, and had a client that I know with that has a a new Model S, the lower end one, you know, and and he got in it. He's like, oh, you know, this guy, this guy's got you know fast motorcycles. He's got like three motorcycles, fast, you know, pretty fast cars. He's driven a Hellcat, and uh, you know, he gets in this Tesla. He's like, oh man, you know, that instant torque, blah blah. I was like, dude. So then he starts talking about the new Camaro. And how he wants to get that, and and I'm like, you're stupid. I was like, that freaking Tesla will blow it out of the water every single time. Yeah. You get you get the freaking you know the the P95 whatever it is with with the ludicrous mode. There's nothing out in the road that A is gonna hold on to that. I mean, yeah, maybe at 120 miles an hour it'll catch up, but <laughs> you know, and then you can just pop it back into eco mode. So, uh, they're pretty cool. And with all the charging stations down here now, too, she. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think that does it for this week. I agree. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you next week. Any parting words, Massey? Wu Tang. Wu Tang. Is for Wu Tang is for the mass.